hi guys today we're gonna learn about the quantitative easing so let's go so what is quantitative easing qe it's a form of unconventional monetary policy in which a central bank purchases long-term securities from the open market in order to increase the money supply and encourage lending and investment. Buying these securities add new money to the economy and also serves to lower interest rate by bidding up fixed income securities. It also expands the central bank balance sheet purchases long-term securities from the open market to increase money supply and encourage lending and investment so they so banks purchase securities such as i'm guessing here's also bonds okay when short-term interest rate are either at or approaching zero the normal open market operations of a central bank which target interest rates are no longer effective Instead, a central bank can target specified amounts of asset to purchase. A central bank can target specified amount of assets to purchase. But when short-term interest rates, so does this have to do with like the the two-year two-year like bond do yield bond what you yield those things or is that not related? What when they say short-term interest rate, what does that mean? So QE is specifically focused on long term. So quantitative easing increases the money supply by purchasing asset with newly created bank reserves in order to provide banks with more liquidity. Okay, this this paragraph is like W. Uh, uh, bonds and MB, MBS products. What does, what does that mean though? <laughs> so short-term interest rates are the rate at which short-term borrow, borrowings, borrowings are affected between financial institutions or the rate at which short-term government paper is issued or traded in the market. Did you Google this? <laughs> Seems kind of like a Google answer. But okay. So short-term interest rate is the rate of when they borrow between the financial institution so qe allows bank to have more cash so they are able to lend more freely oh okay okay so key takeaways quantitative easing is a form of monetary policy used by central bank as a method of quickly increasing the domestic money supply and spurring economic activity Quantitative easing usually involves a country's central bank purchasing long-term government bonds. Country's central bank purchasing long-term government bonds, as well as other type of assets such as MBS, mortgage-backed securities, which you just talked about. Purchasing the... What is the long-term government bond? Didn't we talk about this too? The mortgage bank-backed securities are things that's related to housing QE is, is central bank buys long-term bonds and effectively pushes down the yield ah so federal opars just buy government bondings to drop the yield rate like the two-year rate six-year rate ten-year rate those rate 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 and then in response to the economic shutdown caused by COVID-19 pandemic on March 15, 2020, the U.S. Federal Reserve announced a quantitative easing plan of over $700 billion. So now U.S. is thinking about the Federal Reserve sorry, is thinking about repurchasing long-term bonds and other mortgage security or other type of asset then on june 10 2020 after a brief tapering effort the fed extended its program committing to buy at least 80 billion dollars a month in treasuries and 40 dollars in mortgage-backed securities until further notice so here comes the word tapering which we will learn next week but 
So tapering is slowing process of quantitative easing. Is is that how I can view at it? Well, let's let's uh let's let's uh let's try this 2022 Jinri trying to explain quantitative easing specifically. So to understand quantitative easing or to execute quantitative easing, central bank increased the supply of money, like the money in the market, by buying government bonds and other securities. So think and, and then increasing the supply of money lowers interest rate. So quantitative easing is basically saying, hey, the central bank will buy a lot of the government bonds so that the interest rate is low, is going to be lower. However, to connect this with tapering, we want to say, well, we want to do that as a long, like a for a long time so we got to ease like slow down on the purchase of government bond which would be tapering so tapering and quantitative easing kind of goes together in a play because if you change the market right away like abruptly then it brings a lot of up and downs and that's what government don't want to see Shit. i was so sexy Oh my god, that was so sexy, Jinri. She's finally understanding how everything's connected. Yeah, but if there's too many money out there that's been printed, then the interest rate goes up because everything's got everything got expensive. So we have to government has to bring back the printed money, which is basically quantitative easing. So when interest rates are lower, bank can lend with easier terms. Ah, because if the if the interest rate is too high then banks people don't want to borrow money from banks anyways so then government has to decrease the interest rate so when it decreases then people are more ease of borrowing money from banks so everything is happy 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 quantitative easing is typically implemented when interest rates are already near zero because at this point central banks have fewer tools to influence economic growth so how can we see the current interest rate so rates are set to increase meaning borrowing will be slower and variable rate with increase credit cards so what's the current interest rate guys where do we Someone show, tell me current interest rate because the so Fed rate is this interest rate and quantitative easing happens when the Fed interest rate is near zero. So Fed fund rate. So right now it's at one, but it's not near zero. Why are they doing quantitative easing right now then? Rates increasing is kind of scary too. Inflation is largely... Uh, they are tapering. Uh, they're slow. So right now is tapering time because it's not near zero. So they're slowing down on bringing back the money. Uh, to increase the rate. Which is currently being increased. Because it was near zero for two years because of COVID. <gasps> So now it's tapering. Ah, ah! Too many people have too much spending, and inflation is too high. So because of COVID, and people spend so much money, or people earn so much money from stimulus check, the Fed fund rate was nearly zero. So slowly. They need to do quantitative easing. But since it's been increasing, now they're tapering. It was almost a negative. Really? Well, why this shows like this graph though? So. Ah, they don't show it. Holy, holy, mother, father. I was, that was so sick. Okay. If quantitative easing itself loses effectiveness, a government's fiscal policy may also be used to further extend the money supply. So if quantitative easing, so when they're taking money, doesn't even help with the interest rate of increasing the interest rate, 
then they have a new plan of government fiscal policy so we should later learn what government fiscal policy is then and if the interest rate here becomes negative it means it's close to saying it's a bankrupt economy here interest rate meaning fund fed fund rate uh, so fiscal policy would be something else to learn as a method quantitative easing can be com a combination of both monetary and physical uh, the fiscal policy for example if a government purchases assets that consist of long-term government bonds that are being issued in order to finance counter cyclical deficit spending oh so special consideration about the qe if central bank increase the money supply it can create inflation that's what's happening right now guys because you got free money if you're in us if you didn't you better call i don't know far because or trump far because they got money they gave you money the worst possible scenario for the central bank is that its quantitative easing strategy may cause inflation without the intended economic growth so this is basically what happened because they gave too many too much money out there they they were like have some money that inflation was like okay like this is way too much man like i can't live too many out money out there people buy stock with it people buy new shoes people donate to streamers yada yada, yada. so inflation rate got high blah 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 so although most central banks are created by their country government and have some regulatory oversight they can't force banks in their country to increase their lending activity of course because it's limited similarly central banks cannot force borrowers to seek loans and invest of course if the increased money supply created by quantitative easing does not work its way through the banks and into the economy quantitative easing may not be effective Another potentially negative consequence of quantitative easing is that it can devaluate the domestic currency. It didn't do this one though. Ah, uh, they're also trying to recover a lot from free money taken by a ton of scammers. There was a ton of scammers. Making stock overvalued to the point of dangerous level. <sighs> That's why a lot of people are saying that this is a bubble. So a lot of people are saying this is like the same situation with the Lehman Brothers. So we're living in a bubble all the investors out there you're a bubble the retail investors it was a bubble you guys my stock stream is going to fail that means people are going to be interested in stock oh <gasps> okay oh this is so crazy while the devalued currency can help domestic manufacturers because exported goods are cheaper into the global market a falling currency value makes import more expensive it's going to cost more in for their side this can increase the cost of production and consumer price levels i don't think this happened for this market yet <clears throat> so from 2009 until 2014 the u.s fed reserve ran a quantitative easing program by increasing the money supply this had the effect of increasing the asset side of federal reserve balance sheet as it purchases purchased bond mortgage and other assets so this is talking about the 2008 bubble financial crisis bubble blah 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 right <clears throat> so and then to ease that situation they had to apply quantitative easing program and they had to taper it for years house pricing price thanks <laughs> the federal reserve liabilities primarily at U.S. Bank, grew by the same amount and stood over $4 trillion by 2017. The goal of this pro program was for banks to lend and invest those reserves in order to stimulate overall economic growth. However, what actually happened was that banks held on to much of that money as excess, excess reserves. That is pre-COVID peak u.s bank held 2.7 trillion in excess reserve 
which was an unexpected outcome of the Federal Reserve quantitative easing program. So when COVID hit, they reopened this market of, hey, take my money. Central Bank was like, oh no, so many people are having issues. It wasn't gradually, let's give money out. It was abruptly, hey, oh no, here. <laughs> so this situation, we could see that it's worse than the 2008 house price issue. During COVID, we bought debt off of companies along with a lot of QEs because it was hard to make money. So it's so bad right now. And especially the... I know you guys are going to say we shouldn't talk about war. And it's not a war, but the issue going on with Russia and Ukraine and China going all over the place. What is going on with the world? <laughs> Guys, COVID just hit! Can we just be on the happy, happy side? Can countries just be happy for a bit? Why? All of a sudden, even COVID is almost, it's not even over. And then Russia is having issues. And then China's bullying people. Futures in commodity, commodities, food. Ukraine and Russia provided most of the fer fertilizer used by world farmers. An increase in fertilizer means an increase in food. Financial crisis was worse than COVID right now, even if they had more money out during COVID than financial crisis. Because isn't this saying that at pre-COVID peak, US held 2.7 trillion in excess reserve, meaning they gave out this much money? Two quarters of negative GDP is rece recession too. Guys, what is recession? Yay, US market depression is coming! Sarcasm? <laughs> that one I knew it was sarcasm. <laughs> hey, what's, what's recession? Wait, so guys, for those who invested and sold at cheap or at high price and doesn't have to deal with all this like inflation issue, da 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 da. Must have earned so much money. Recession is a period of temporary economic decline during which trade and industri industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by a fall in GDP. Ah, oh. so if if you if there are a certain time limit of having economic decline, then that is called recession. Ah, oh, you said. Sorry, sorry, you guys. I I'm just it's it's lot lot to process in my brain, so I didn't read that. Three months of no growth is recession. When the price are high, sell. When they're low, that's my policy. I think that's everyone's policy, but you never know when it's high and when it's low. <laughs> okay, continuing. Most economists believe that the Federal Reserve quantitative easing program helped to rescue the U.S. economy following the 2008 financial. Crisis. However, the magnitude of its role in the subsequent recovery is actually impossible to quantify. Other central banks have attempted to deploy quantitative easing as a means of fighting off recession and deflation in their country with similarly inconclusive results. Now, example. Following the Asian financial crisis of 1997, Japan fell into an economic recession. So meaning more than two quarters, they had no earning. Beginning in 2001, Bank of Japan uh, began an aggressive quantitative easing program in order to curb deflation and stimulate the economy. I didn't know this happened. Uh, the bank moved the, from buying Japanese government bonds to buying private debt and stock. However, quantitative easing campaign failed to meet its goal. Between 1995 and 2007, Japanese gross, so, so GDP fell from roughly 5.45 trillion to 4.52 trillion. Even if they worked this hard. So, even if, so they were already in a recession and they attempted to do quantitative QE. Oh, but still the GDP fell. The Swiss bank also employed a quantitative easing strategy following the 2008 financial crisis. 
eventually the S the Swiss bank owned assets that exceeded the annual economic output for the entire country. This made the S SMB's version of quantitative easing the largest in the world. So this must have been very a famous uh, quantitative easing issue historical moment. Although economic growth has been positive in Switzerland, it is unclear how much of the subs subsequent recovery can be attributed to the SMB's quantitative easing program. So even if their growth economic growth was better after applying the quantitative easing we're not sure how well the bank itself is doing let's see because uh or how much it has had recovered from do applying the quantitative easing strategy for example, although interest rates were pushed below 0%, the SMB was still unable to re achieve its inflation target. So market will have a flood of car supply soon. Uh, Japan effectively controlling interest rates and controlling stock price. Japan also had devalued their currency during this process. <gasps> so is that why like Japan is having a hard time, like I guess quote unquote surviving because of the 2000 1997 crisis wow. and i guess there's more examples such as bank of england we see there's some 2016 to 2018 type of capital formation and then this would be the covid example where march 15th 2020 Federal Reserve announced its plan to implement up to $700 billion in asset purchases as an emergency measure to provide liquidity to the U.S. financial system. The decision was made as a result of a massive economic and market turmoil, but turmoil but brought on by the rapid spread of COVID-19 and ensuing economic shutdown. Subsequent action have indefinitely expanded this QE action, and this is actually ongoing. Because I mean, right now they are on the uh, applying or they are tapering, but this was the QE strategy went on for two years. Same thing will happen to Korea due to low birth rate. How would how does that apply to the economy? So how does quantitative easing work? Quantitative easing is a type of monetary policy where the central bank tries to increase the liquidity in the financial system, typically by purchasing the long-dated government bonds. Da -da 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 -da, was used in 2001 by Bank of Japan. So this must have been like the first official like situation where quantitative easing was needed but has since been adopted by the U.S. and several other countries. By purchasing these securities from banks, the central bank hopes to stimulate economic growth by empowering banks to lend or invest more freely. So long, long story short, they purchased these, like these bonds and they, from what they purchased, they give out to people and that becomes a stimulus check saying hey we the central bank borrowed money so that you guys can have a living and here you go this is free money for you guys so the next question that you could have about qe is that is it printing money critics have argued that quantitative easing is effectively a form of money printing critics often point to examples in histories where money printing has led to hyperinflation such as case of Zimbabwe in the early 20, 2000s <clears throat> or Germany in the 1920s. However, pro pro proponents of quantitative easing will point out that because it uses bank as intermediaries rather than placing cash directly in the hands of individuals and businesses, quantitative easing carries less risk of producing runaway inflation. I just missed that whole sentence, guys. 
I I I'm so confused from here to here, guys. What the heck? Pasa? <laughs> what the heck is yum yummy? <laughs> It was brain fart right there. Did you hear my brain like just snapping? <laughs> so however... <laughs> so is it printing money or is it not printing money? I guess they're saying that it... Ah, uh, it's... Ah... Uh, so you can... Another way of viewing QE is artificial growth. So basically they allow banks to print their own money. They're like, hey bank. I know... Hey, 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 bank. You know what? <clears throat> hey, bank. I know this isn't real cash, but I give you this. This will become $100. Oh, no. Banks don't print cash? Then who prints money? The government just gives you, hey, this is $100. Even if it looks like this, it's going to be worth $100. I'm embedding it in your head. <laughs> In your head, you guys, this envelope is going to be cost $100. 100, guys. This is $100 worth. Remember. Is that how it goes? Oh, the Fed? Yeah, the, so the Fed prints the money and gives it to bank. Pouring bank. Pouring money. Free money. <gasps> In exchange for bonds. So they're printing fake money so give me your bond and this money here's my money does quantitative easing cause inflation which is another question that comes often because it's not in the market so it's like as if i got monopoly money bro oh my god it's like in the game monopoly you know how we have a banker <clears throat> So QE is basically when the banker just says, Hey, oh shoot, your town looks like you need money. I'll just give you this. Just, you know, give me a bond. What would be the bond? You know, just give me your, give me your, 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 uh, signature or <laughs> give me, give me your personal credit card. <laughs> Oh, give me your personal credit card. I'll give you Monopoly money for free. Oh, money is so hard. There is disagreement about whether quantitative easing causes inflation and to what extent it might do so. For example, Bojay has repeatedly engaged in quantitative easing as a way of deliberately increasing inflation within their economy. However, these attempts have so far failed with inflation remaining at extreme low levels since 1990. Similarly, many critics warned that the U.S. use of QE in the year following 2008 financial crisis would risk unleashing dangerous inflation, but so far this rise in inflation has yet to be materialized. But now, COVID is here. And didn't the inflation reach its highest right now? So, what I learned from this... <clears throat> QE is dangerous. It's like that emergency button where if it's not like that bad, you don't, you technically don't really press an emergency button unless like, you know, it's like life or death matter. But then the subsequence of you pressing that button there's going to be so bad things that could happen after. The aftermath of hitting that button, you might not even be able to recover from. I mean, you probably would, but it's going to take years and years to recover. So we are in a very bad situation, guys. Oh my god. <laughs> I should not have been happy getting all of those stimulus checks. If I didn't really need it, <clears throat> then... Oh, because already the living cost increased. <gasps> and it sucks for those who didn't get stimulus check too. At least we, we got money, but... Yash, you guys must work hard. 
と